I lived in Dunoon until I was about nine and a half, ten, and having both the sea and the countryside, we were spoilt for choice. But yeah, I did enjoy it so much. I think the fondest memories I had is when we were a family, when we were all together. Philip was there, George, Helena, all right, my stepfather and my mother. We were there together as a family. That's what I liked. Camels come. Two humps. So with this meeting, oh yeah, meeting. <laughs> will it all be in Scottish? No, no like no. Well, I like going out because I love the country. I loved always going into the parks. I especially loved the um, open, openness of the fields. The hills, the smell of the trees, and the smell of the sea. Yeah, go this way and we get to the pond and the stream. Running in the sand, living on the land. The salty breeze was in our eyes. We stood beneath the dragonflies and danced all night. One of the things that I remember the, the most was playing with my mates in the street when I was a kid. There's newts, frogs and fish. Oh, and snakes. We used to go into the apple orchards down at the bottom of our road. And we used to climb in there as kids and come back absolutely sick as a dog because we'd eat apples and apples and apples and it turns to alcohol in your stomach. And then we'd come home sick as a dog, George and I, even Philip when he was with us. We used to love doing these little things. Basically the freedom that we had as children, playing and when we could go out and play. Flowing so free, blowing in the breeze. The songs we sung so long ago, with whiskey and an afterglow, we shine like new.
Sarah. Here. I always remember Tracy being born because my mother came down and it was the first time she showed sort of any emotion because it was her granddaughter and you know she she took a liking to Tracy so when I used to go around there and visit my mum to take Tracy it was always are you bringing Tracy so I'd take Tracy and she used to have a little cabinet with dollies in it and Tracy used to sit there and just look at all these dollies wishing she could take them out of the cabinet. I think every parent is apprehensive, I wouldn't say scared, you're apprehensive because it's a new person, you've got another lot of responsibility and it's a big responsibility because you've got to bring that child up right, you know, teach it respect, you've got to teach it to love, you've got to show it everything you expect from a good person. It's all she ever knew. I always remember Celine being born because I just walked out of the hospital and then because they said, oh, she's not going to come. And then the next thing I took, got a phone call just as I got home, because in them days there was no such thing as mobile phones. So it was all landline. Come back, and when I came back, Celine was there. It's not locked. You were born on Christmas Day. <laughs> And they kept coming up to me and saying, he's a Christmas baby, he's a Christmas, we can have him in the newspaper. I said, no, I don't want my son in the newspaper at all. And then I bought a camper van <laughs> when the day you were born. And I rolled up with this van. He said, what is this? So I said, well, this will remind us Andrew was born camping. Harder. I mean, it needs to look realistic. <laughs> and the day that Jonathan was born, I had you and Celine, just as your mum got in, 
um, her sister said, oh, she said, I'm just going off duty, but I'm going to stay here for the birth. And she stayed the whole time for Jonathan to be born. And I had to look after the two of you in the waiting room. And then, of course, Jonathan came. Oh, it's comfortable. I used to love my mother taking us to the beach down in Danoon. Although it was just to chuck stones in. We did try to swim, but the water was always too cold to go in. So, but we would go in up to our knees and then come back again, shivering. But it was just fun to be in the sea. We liked the simple things. We didn't enjoy the most expensive thing. We, we couldn't afford anything anyway. But we enjoyed the simple things. Once a year she used to take us to the Kelvin Hall. And that's a huge, great big place where they set up loads of activities and fun fairs. And all. It was, it's a really good day out. I used to enjoy that. My mother was quite a hard woman. Um, she wasn't an easy woman to please. Um, she fed us. She clothed us. She put shoes on our feet once a year, each of us, because that's all we, she could afford. But there was not much love in the family, because my mother never had the time for it, neither my stepfather. So it was difficult to be brought up. We'd look at love for each other, Philip, Helena, George and myself. didn't meet my dad until I was in my 20s and I met him at Twickenham for the first time. I never remembered him because he left when I was a baby. He was an electrical jointer before he got polio. And uh, he went down and left Helena and Philip at a bus stop and said goodbye, never looked back because he had to go down to Exeter to convalesce and that's where he met Peggy. I met your mum, 
She came here for three months holiday from Malaysia and it was roughly about April. And when I shook her hand and I first met her, I said, I'm going to marry that girl. And I did by the end of that year. We hope that Celine's garden will be... We're going to put one in Celine's garden and hope it will block all her neighbours up. That's what she wants. <laughs> what can you say about your mum? Perfect. So across the water there you'll find that this Gurik and here is the Danun Pier. The pier itself, I mean it's been there for quite a number of years and because the timbers are starting to rot they can't uh, use it anymore because that used to be the carport just down the bottom here. But because it's not in service anymore they're having to use the sandbank service from Gurik to Danun. So it's the only means of crossing now other than if you're a passenger you can go onto the passenger ferry which is just down here on my left hand side. One when I ran away when I was a little boy with my brothers we got as far as Anellen when we got arrested and then taken to the Queen's Hall my sister had actually left school she was 15 years old and she went with my stepfather and my mother to that hall to dance they had to empty the Queen's Hall out in order to get my parents plus my sister. And of course my parents weren't too happy. Now I was the stepfather and neither was Helena because it was our very first night going out as, a, as an adult, if you like, at 15 years old. And on this particular hill, I used to play with my brothers, Philip and George, and we would play up here, and then we'd go down to the seaside and play afterwards. So this has got a lot of significance for uh, our family. We lived in 31 Dixon Avenue before we left to go to Glasgow. But while we lived here, that's the site that we used to wake up to every morning. Now they've built flats through where we used to have a big long garden but they've built flats and little houses for old age pensioners. That was Helena's room at the bottom, that was my room at the top. Helena when she left school, her first little job was in a shop that used to be located here in the corner and the name of the shop was called McCartney's and at the back of the McCartney's he used to have his bins that used to put his cakes and buns in at the end of the day that he didn't sell and kids used to go there and help themselves. This is the school that we went to before we left the noon. It's called Kim Primary and that would be my entrance to go in to the school and my class was just inside the other side. You can't see it so well. We used to play on these fields that were here and they also use it for the Kyle games. But this was the school that I went to, and you know, it was a great little school. First teacher was called Miss Kerr. My second teacher was Miss McKechnie. And I always remember these two names. Don't know why. So I remember them. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And we lived there, and our name was Wilson. I thought I knew who you George were. George Wilson. Uh, Margaret. My mum was really friendly with Nan Wilson. She had four boys. That's right. Well, it's three boys and one girl. Right, okay. Is he in the school? Are You're you kidding me. No, yeah. well, I've got the am the key holder. Are you? Yes. I'd love to see you in the school. That used to be the headmaster's room. Yes. That one there. Mr. Jackson. Oh, this has really changed, hasn't yeah, it? this is beautiful. Wow. Now, so, there was two classrooms here. I used to sit just here, roughly about there. And um, this was my last classroom before we left to Glasgow. But this is fabulous. Look at this. This is my class. This is your class. And do you know, I was sat up here. If, she, if you upset her, she'd have you out 
and you would be put in the corner with a big hat on you, dunce. This is not the original board though, is it? Yeah. Is it? But I remember she used to write on this and she'd write, that's your, that's your work, busy. And if you hadn't had your pencil in your hand, she used to bring her strap and wrap you right across the knuckles. Yeah, she gave me six of the best to teach the class a lesson for not taking time off school. Thank you ever so much for your time. You're really appreciate I've always done this and I still do it. When something happens, I go away and take time to think about it so that I've got the right answers to come back and give rather than making split comments at that time because you tend to say the wrong thing or give the wrong impression or say the wrong information. So it's best to go away, get your facts or get your mind right before you actually say something. The kitchen's just a little small. I got a job at the local hardware store where I work till five o'clock. Now they build another home improvement palace down the block. Oh, oh, oh lost the sense of all this home improvement. Well, I like my home. We were gone by 63. Would have stayed the same. Yeah, Mrs. Gibson. So you remembered Mrs. Gibson, eh? Ian Gibson was one of the boys. Yeah. These are cabin pictures. So there's a good, a good few names there. Hmm. This is 73, 74, so that... Right. Don't, well, don't, don't be too hung up on the dates. Right. Because remember, you were at school from the time you were five. Yeah, that's until right. Until you were 11. So that's some right. of these folk would be in maybe your class. 65. No, I wouldn't be in that one. Arnell. Nineteen fifty four, so that's Helena. That's her there, Miss McGregor. That's Philip. Sanders. It's because we were getting changed from Saunders to Wilson at the time. Two, three, four, five. No, that's not me. No, there was a lot of Wilsons because they might have put me in as Saunders as well under my birth certificate. And that was my sister I, Helena. I, I joined into Helena Marnock. No, Saunders. Saunders. There she is. Marnock, isn't she? She's yeah. Marnock now. How do you know that? Because she's been in here. She was in my class at school. All oh, right. <laughs> Got my brother Philip. Right. Uh, and if you go, I, I remember him. Aye. See what it says, Sanders, Sanders Wilson. Yeah, it, should be Saunders. it should have been Saunders Wilson because yeah. we were just having the name change. Right. Aye. So. Didn't he find you? That was a pity. No. Nah. You probably were plunk in school. Probably. Aye. <laughs> So we managed to find a photograph of Helena and we managed to find a photograph of Philip and also one of my mother uh, in the registry. 
So although her photograph's not there, but it just gives indication that she lived in 31 Dixon Avenue and her maximum income for the year was £54 per year. And in them days, that was considered a lot of money. So the school in Kim is actually going to be pulled down by the end of this year. And they're going to have some sort of um, exhibition and hopefully this people here will send me on details to that exhibition that will be held. I chose my career to be a chef but unfortunately over the period of time doing my course and being a, a, a commie chef then an apprentice chef I, I worked my way up to being a second chef running this kitchen with the head chef but my allergy was just too bad that eventually I couldn't, um, I couldn't work with fish at all, couldn't go near it and uh, I had to give up working with fish. So then I decided instead of just sitting around moping around saying right I've done four years in college I might as well do something else. So I took up um, electrical work, electrical installation and uh, there was a company down in London that took me on and started training me. I'm determined. Determination to make sure that something gets done. I've always been like that. I can't stop, I can't start a job and leave it. I have to see it to its finish and that's the same with my working life I've always been determined that I had to understand why I was doing the job what I was going to gain out of it and how I was able to understand it to make it better for the future for both myself and others The best decision ever made was having children. My dad would always say, you know, encourage your children to stay in the truth and to work hard for Jehovah in any way they could. Make sure that they were brought up right, which I hope we did. So you, Celine, Jonathan, Tracy, you know, with their spouses, that they remain steadfast, looking after each other continually, looking after their mum, uh, and also to re definitely remain in the truth. It might be difficult, but sometimes your parents know better. They even know better than the grandparents. <laughs> you. The most thankful thing I've had is the truth. Definitely thankful for that because I've got a future to look forward to. And been able to have the jobs that I've had over the years. Been thankful for that. At my health, which is reasonably good, wouldn't say it's fantastic, uh, and I'm thankful too that um, you know we have a, a nice large family. I'm thankful for that.